Theorem 422 is as follows. We want to show, we want to say that a language is decidable if and only if it is recognizable and co-recognizable. This is a theorem that looks um, at a first glance quite simple, but if you go through the proof in a more detailed fashion, you will note that it's not trivial at all. So what is decidability, recognizability, and co-recognizability? Well, decidability, I assume you already know. So it means that there is a Turing machine that recognizes L and also that Turing machine is a decider. So it always returns either accept or reject. It never loops. So we're going to say that it is recognizable and co-recognizable. We want to prove that. So what is co-recognizable? L recognizable means that there is a Turing machine that recognizes L. So this part we should know. What is co-recognizability? Co-recognizability is, is just a complement of L. And this is something we learned before, but we didn't use that much, right? The complement of a language is all the words that are not in the language, right? So you can think of it in two ways, right? You can describe it uh, very simply with the following statement, all the words that are not in L. But you could also uh, think of defining it as sigma star is all possible words. And from sigma star, you um, remove L. So you remove all the words that are in L. You remove them from sigma star. You get L with the bar on top. So L bar or the complement of L. Um, in the formalism, you will see this in this Turing. And we have, where is complement? Complement. Okay, so the complement is defined as all the words that are not in the language. Pretty simple. And then what we'll see, there are a few rules that we're going to need, especially for homework seven. And the rules are things like the complement of the complement of a language is the same as, as its language, uh, which is very important. So you have the language and you do bar bar, two bars. That's the same as removing it. So you can uh, always simplify two bars as uh, just removing them. Uh, and then there are other important theorems that we'll learn about um, the complement. But for now, this is the most important one. So you now what we need to show is if L is decidable, then we can go we go one way and the other way. So now let's see. Uh, we're not going to do the whole proof today. The rest of the proof is going to be on the next lecture. So uh, L is decidable. We can prove it in, you know, because we're proving it if we, we look at this direction. If L is decidable, then L is recognizable and L is co-recognizable. We can actually simplify this whole thing into three subproofs. First one is if L is decidable, then L is recognizable, which is trivial. Uh, if L is decidable, then L is co-recognizable, which is uh, also not very complicated. And then the difficult part, which is to show if L is recognizable and co-recognizable, then it is decidable. And today we're going to see uh, these two, are we? Let me see. Yeah. So the first part is if L is decidable, then L is co-recognizable. And this is pretty easy, right? It has to do with how we defined, um, how we defined, where is, yeah, here it is. So if L is decidable, then it is recognizable. And for this, we need to look at the definition. How did we define uh, decidable? Well, a language is decidable if there exists a machine that decides L, right? Um, so if uh, we have an assumption that we have L being decidable, so if this is an exist, we can just destruct it and we get the machine and we get the language. So this is what we're doing in the first step. Okay, so now we know that there is some machine that decides L. So what is the, the definition of decides? Something decides if M recognizes L and M is a decider, right? So what we want to prove is that something recognizes L. What is that something? Well, it's M, right? So that's pretty easy. So 
If we look at the definition of how the sides is, this is just an N, so we can destruct it as well. And we get the two parts. We get that M recognizes L and M is a decider. So if M recognizes L, what is the definition of, of recognizes? There exists some machine that recognizes L. So this is pretty easy. We have the assumption here. Um, so we apply, as you will see, um, you always want to use this underscore def uh, theorems. So it's saying if, if something recognizes L, then that language is recognizable. Right? So we apply that theorem. Now we need to show simply that M recognizes L, and that is it's the assumption. So pretty easy. Okay, so this first part where if L is decidable, then L is recognizable is trivial. Really, if you think about it, L is recognizable. Well, all languages that are decidable have to be recognizable according to their definition. So it's simply a way of, you simply need to massage the assumption until you get, you get this. Okay, so the second part of the proof is if L is decidable, then L is co-recognizable. Okay, and this one, what we need to do is we need to, the way we prove this is as follows. First, we show that if L is decidable, then its complement is also decidable. Okay. And then what we need to show is F, if the complement is decidable, then the complement is recognizable. This part is easy, right? That's what we just proved. We know that if something is decidable and it, it's also recognizable. That's easy. So this second part should be trivial. So how difficult would it be to prove that if L is decidable, then its complement is decidable? That's what we'll see in our next lesson. And that concludes our, our uh, videos for today.